Welcome back y'all and today we are going to talk about how to prepare freeze-dried brine shrimp for your fish. Now when it comes to feeding these types of foods, obviously feeding live baby brine shrimp is going to be of course the most nutritious option. You can buy a package of eggs for so cheap online and making your own brine shrimp hatchery is actually not that difficult. Now the next runner up as far as nutrition goes for me would be frozen foods, although that can get quite expensive quite quickly. Just like feeding live baby brine shrimp and going through the process of hatching brine shrimp might not be for everyone. So of course that brings us to the freeze dried variety. Now it is always important to really give your fish a varied diet. This can really help with keeping them healthy, keeping them happy and giving them a longer lifespan. Now I don't really feed the freeze dried to my fish very often. This is kind of something that I use as like my last resort, but I have the time and the patience to do things like hatch baby brine shrimp. So I always worry about losing some of the nutritional value when it comes to freeze dried foods. So I like to keep a bottle of Seachem Nourish on hand. This can help to add vitamins and minerals back into the brine shrimp, making them a little bit more nutritious. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on how to prepare these. So first things first, I did go ahead and get a cup filled with dechlorinated water. Now I just go ahead and use dechlorinated water. A lot of people will use water from their tank. I don't just because I have multiple tanks and I worry about cross contamination. So I just go ahead and get a bowl of dechlorinated water. Next, we're going to go ahead and pull out a cube of our freeze dried brine shrimp. And this is what our cubes look like coming out of the little can. They're actually really spongy and very easy to cut. So if you're only feeding maybe one tank of fish, maybe you only have one betta that you wanna feed, then it's real easy to cut this into portions. So I am actually going to portion this out. I only want just a little bit. And then I can put my excess just back into the container. Now that we're done portioning that out, I'm going to go ahead and shake up my bottle of Nourish and add one capful to the water. I do quite often add this to my feedings. I will actually even use this to soak my pellets in sometimes. I just want to make sure that my fish are always getting adequate nutrition. So now I just went ahead and added the broken off piece into the bowl. So now we're going to go ahead and let that soak for about 15 minutes and we will be right back. So now that we've been soaking these for about 15 minutes, just like I do with my freeze dried blood worms or any freeze dried food really for that matter, I'm going to go through and take a toothpick and try and kind of squeeze out any potential air pockets and stuff like that. So now that we've gotten all the air pockets and stuff out of these as best as we can, we are going to go ahead and feed them to our fish. So when it comes to freeze dried foods, one of the reasons that we want to soak our food first before feeding our fish is because sometimes freeze dried foods can cause problems with fish's systems. The over dryness of the product can sometimes cause blockages and things that can make our fish stressed and potentially ill. So what we're trying to do when we are soaking the food is try to return some of that moisture and some of that nutrition back into the food before feeding it to our fish. Especially when you're keeping fish like I do, like keeping a bunch of bettas around that are notorious for having problems with things like constipation. Feeding them a proper diet is so important to make sure that they keep from getting any type of health issues. So anyway, guys, that's all I really have for y'all today. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. I love you guys, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!